Hello and welcome back to the X-Files Revisited. We are on to episode 14 of season 5. I can't believe we're getting through this season so quickly. Um, mm. Don't really want it to end, to be honest, Brian. But here we are, the red and the black, part 2 of our mythology episode here. So, will we start off with our little guessing game? Yeah, go on. 217 episodes, IMDb, ranked. Where do you think this sits? And, and where did... I can't remember where part one. I can't now, actually. <laughs> now that we've slept on it. <laughs> um, just, just on the in, uh, on the subject, actually, of uh, where, of these rankings. While we're at it, um, yeah. I recently went on to, to to have a look where this sat, and was surprised to find that um, obviously we'd just done Bad Blood not so long ago. And that was the number one ranked episode, or at least it was when I'd first written down the numbers. Uh, it has changed. It's dropped down to number two. And just for anyone who's interested, currently the number one is Clyde Brookman's Final Repose. So, yeah, uh, these do fluctuate. So, uh, But this, this one, as of time that we're recording, this is the up-to-date yeah. position as to where it sits. But go on. 30. Ooh, aiming high. No, it's 59. 59. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, 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 the thought process that went into that was just a random number. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete random number there. Don't think okay. about it. Yeah. So, yeah, should we, get, should we get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, f first of all, red and the black. What do you think that mm. refers to, title-wise? Um, usually, it refers to like um, money or good graces. You're in the red or the black. Yeah, you know, red being bad, black, black being good. Like the balance yeah. of 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 things. Yeah, but that's usually like red or or the black, isn't it? Whereas this is the red and the black. I I, I wonder if the red is in reference to the Russian kind of thing mm. and yeah, in, in the black oil yeah and the black is in in reference to the black oil i don't know it's just it, it it's it, it, this is one of those titles where i've never quite been sure on why it's called that so if anybody's got if anybody's clued into that is watching just uh do you think when they were writing this episode they're like, <laughs> toying with names and like someone in the back just went red and the black and somebody <laughs> went why and they just went I don't know. <laughs> They'll just ponder about it for years. It's like Reservoir Dogs, isn't it? It's like, I'm, I'm going to yeah. call it Reservoir Dog. What's a Reservoir Dog? No clue. <laughs> but it sounds good. <clears throat> okay. So we open up in a snowy landscape as a boy climbs a mountain whilst mm. someone writes a letter. A letter mm. to a son. A son that works at the FBI. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, um, it's an interesting little opening. Um, mm. that, that boy has got one hell of a crappy weekend job, it looks like, like <laughs> trudging through three feet of snow to get a letter. So, you know, yeah. we, we know how remote this place is. It's, um, it, I find it interesting because they do obviously you couldn't do a voiceover on this because it would give the game away mm. straight away. Um, but they do, they do, they play it all out through. We, we have to read basically. We have to read what's being said on the letter. Um, mm. Whereas normally, with a, with something like a scene like this that opens an episode, they'd normally do like voiceover, wouldn't they? They'd have the have mm. the the letter being read out by the person. Uh, so yeah. No, Brian, I, I don't want to see it, but I'm going to have to see it. It feels like every episode we're referring to the field I... <laughs> <laughs> like, that thing sticks in my mind, and it's not for a good reason. So every time you see, like, standing with a letter, reading, like, <laughs> that... Oh. It's left a stain on the legacy of the Xbox. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> So we go from there to Ruskin Dam, which is where we left off at the end mm. of last episode, um, in which the, it's basically just littered with burnt bodies. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of them being Cancer Man's killer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have we seen him before? Yes. 
<laughs> we went over this last episode, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> so this was the Hitman. So I, I I thought it was a nice little bit of synergy in a way, in mm. that given given the re- revelation that we get at the end that the person at the beginning mm. was indeed Cancer Man, mm. I find it quite poetic that the man who supposedly killed Can- Cancer Man, he is literally in the very next scene dead. Mm. Which I, I that, I don't know. There's just something about that that seems quite poetic. It's like we're, we're being thrown these hints that yeah. can be alive, and then immediately after that, we see that can- the one who tried to kill Cancer Man is dead. Can I just like th- I had actually forgot Cancer Man had been shot, <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't know if it's just age or what is going on because I really do sit and pay attention to these episodes, but. I forgot it was supposed to be dead. I think that it's just, I think it's such a given that they're not going to kill the the, the arch nemesis of the show that it doesn't even enter your head that he's dead. And Mm. even back when he was supposedly assassinated, Skinner does tell Mulder nobody was found. Mm. (laughs) So so they called it out right then and there. It's like a piece of information they should have left to a later date um, mm-hmm. rather than, you know, because you should have just had skin and saying cancer man's dead. Um, but yeah, yeah, whatever. So Mulder arrives in slow-mo because mm-hmm. it's all emotional. Like he's looking for Scully's body um, and he sees this redhead that looks quite like her. He goes over. We know there's no tension there. We know it's not. Scully. <laughs> you got a movie coming peeps. Yeah. <laughs> we know that's not Scully. Um, yeah, uh, Skinner kind of collars him, and and yeah, tells him that it's alive. I, I, I don't, I don't think the the moment is really there to build tension as to whether or not we think Scully's there. I think it's there to show us uh, Mulder's state of mind at this mm. point, and uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, probably. So, we, we, what do you think of that um, that bridge? I, I like all the the charred body stuff. That's quite kind yeah. of freaky and like, you know um, interesting. And then the whole idea of Skinner and Mulder and looking for Scully. It's just like, come on, people! Like, <laughs> yeah, we, we know, we all know. But just, yeah. just get to see her. Yeah, I, I I like the location. I do like the location of that bridge. It's interesting, and, yeah, yeah. And the pr- product with some some effort gone into the production design mm. and just getting it. It's quite cinematic. But uh, so they get onto a helicopter and off they go. Uh, and Spender, Agent Spender, comes along and he's all like, What's she found? What's she found? Yes. So he, he's looking for his mom, obviously. Mm. Uh, and there is no answer really to give him. So, yeah, it but I, like pa- parachute pants. That he's kind of wearing as well, those like, incredibly large <laughs> trousers that I can't go over. Not, not helped by the rotor blades of a helicopter. No, really not. <laughs> that, that dude's going to take off. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But uh, whatever you, th- I don't know what your thoughts are on Spender at this point. Um, I know as the show goes on, hmm. people have their ideas about him. But certainly at this point, I do feel sympathy for the guy. Um, cause everything I get from him at this point is just, he, he's just a guy who's trying to make his way in the FBI, um, mm. doing things, you know, prop, prop. Well, I've got to say, in, in my opinion, Brian, I do not care at all about him. Uh, I know you say because it's a bigger part, but just now zero interest because he's, he, right. he's just all kind of one note, you know, like just leave my mom out of this. And right. Just like, I, I'm waiting for more to be expanded. And by the time this episode finishes, there's revelations and things that make yeah. me more interested. But at this point, I'm just like, it doesn't really, it doesn't annoy me. It doesn't yeah. interest me. He just kind of, he's there. Just just there, yeah. 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 So <laughs> we go to, <laughs> I cracked up showing this bit. Cause, so, so there's a doctor working on Marita Kovarebius. You, you know Marita Kovarebius. Yeah, you. You know her. Oh, you know the blonde her. girl. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, the blonde girl. Um, so she she's kind of lay on her bed, coma. So she's got oil slick eyes, kind of going. Um, mm. A well manicured man and a syndicate are all watching. Mm. And <laughs> the thing that made me crack up is this spooky ass doctor that's working on. Her. <laughs> I don't know if you paid attention, but just the look of her and everything. she's like something out of one of these old universal monster movies. No, I just, don't think I noticed. It had to be intentional casting. She's just there's just something off about her. She's too freaky, too spooky. But mm. yeah, so uh so, so yeah, so, so they're basically working on Marie, so they're gonna mm. inject her with this vaccine and see what happens. So we go to the hospital where Mulder wakes Scully. Mm-hmm. Um, she gets up and she's she just starts chatting away like <laughs> nothing's happened. <laughs> and then when uh, when Mulder starts talking to her about stuff, uh, like the look on her face just kind of changes, and you realise, mm-hmm. holy crap, she doesn't remember a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> she's. Uh, I, I would say it was convenient, but it's it's already been established in. Yeah. X Files law that you lose nine minutes, so it mm-hmm. stands to reason that she ain't gonna have a clue what happened. Um, so she she sees on the TV the news of all the, yeah. the burnt bodies and stuff, and it's like, oh crap, I was there. Um, Mulder's like, yeah, 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 still still nothing. Um, so yeah, basically a nurse comes in, tells Mulder to get out because Scully needs to rest. So mm-hmm. you've woken up, you freaked her out. Now you gotta go, you go. <laughs> on your way. <laughs> yeah, and it's basically just a scene to say that Scully's okay and can't remember anything, so she's no use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Spender confronts Mulder outside Scully's room. He's mm. very angry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's just like he was trying to do everything he could to keep his mum away from what he sees really as a bunch of lunatics um, yeah. and away from this cult. And it, it's, it, yeah, it, the, the complete opposite has happened. So he's just like, yeah, he blames Mulder because obviously Mulder is the poster boy for mm. <laughs> all things alien. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I do like the kind of allegory they have of, of treating this almost like an addiction that the people have got, like, you know, the, the, yeah. the cultish people, yeah. you know, how they, you know, some of them don't want Scully, doesn't want to be dependent, but feels that kind of draw. Mm. So I, I do kind of like that, or maybe I'm reading too much into it. it. It's it's not something I considered, but um, now that you've said it, I, I, I could see, I could see it being drawn in there. Mm. Um, so we go back to the ship with Krychek and the well manicured man. Uh, well manicured man wakes Krychek up, and. <clears throat> gives him water and and it, it, it's 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 a, i like the scene because it it's referencing back to the previous episode when yep. Krychek gave water in a similar fashion to the boy um and you see like a moment in Krychek where he realizes that and he mm. <laughs> spits the water out because he realizes he's become well, he's now in the position the boy was in, and it's uh, and you can see how much he detests yeah. that. But I also thought as well as he just really distrusted this guy and wasn't sure if the water was <laughs> drinkable <laughs> at the same time, you know? Mm. Was, was the, this guy put some of the black ooze into the water or something? Or yeah. So Krychek infected the boy mm. so that he would infect anyone who tried to take him, um, mm. which is a nice bit of exposition from well manicured man there uh so but uh well manicured man wants the vaccine basically because mm-hmm. he's like you, why would you infect the boy unless you had a vaccine so that's what yeah. i want he wants the vaccine so yeah um it, it it's I, it, it, it it yeah n- never mind <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll say it a bit later on because i, I, okay. I there's, there's one thing about this two part of the it's probably the one detail I shouldn't be wrestling with. There's probably about 20 other details I should be wrestling with, but it's this detail that kind of just rubs me the wrong way a bit. Um, I don't know. It, it, I'll, I'll say it. It's basically, it's, it's, it's the aliens deforming mm. their eyes. Um, how does that work? Cause <laughs> alien magic. It's like, 
can they still see with that? Like, is it is it just that these alien shapeshifters, um, they appear like humans, therefore they make what look like eyes, but yeah. it's not that they need them. Mm -hmm. It's just, and it, yeah, you know what I mean. It's just, it's just a yeah. bit like okay, yeah, great. You've yeah. You've, you've you've taken I, I can, away. I your that never really hung up on that, Brian, because I just assumed alien. It's it's alien. It's alien oil. Well, it's just yeah, no, but it's just like one we've already ascertained that, or at least it seemed that way to me in Tunguska and Terma that the oil slick aliens and this will actually be confirmed in the movie the oil slick alien can once it gets on your skin it can penetrate yeah so it can get into you just through your skin it doesn't have to go through the eyeballs um and to like yeah if like do these guys not need their eyes uh and it's and it's so, <laughs> you know it's just it's just a bit weird it's like, if so, why why would they be scared of infection anyway? It's it's all just a bit of a. For me, that's the thing I get hung up on with this one. Mm. <clears throat> I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so we got to the Air Force base, and we see yeah. in a rather pretty decent kind of turn of pyrotechnics a UFO crash landing, yeah. and these faceless aliens get out. One of them appears to be dead. The other one's kind of dragging his body out. And the military surround these two guys. <clears throat> it's um, a pretty cool sequence. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Nice. It's a, yeah, a little bit of action thrown in there, a bit of special yeah. effects. I, I, I do like that aliens. landing. I do like that yeah. cross landing. It's well That's done. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure that this alien should really be threatened by these military people because we've already seen that. They can only be stopped with that thing that pierces the base mm. of the neck. So, yeah, not quite sure what they'd be able to do. But Scully looks at pictures. Still no memory. Mm -hmm. Mulder found more implants in Scully. So the pictures are, she's got like these, these, um, so M M yeah, Mulder's had more x rays done. Yeah. And found more implants in Scully. Um, and Mulder basically says the real question we should be trying to get to grips with is who made the chip? Who made the implants? Yeah. Uh, to which he then instantly gives an answer, <laughs> which, which is the government. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, Scully wants, sorry, Scully won't follow without her memories. Um, and Mulder says, uh, well, he basically says he's got away. He says, "What if I mm. could give you those memories back?" Uh, but um, yeah, it, it, it's yeah. Uh, I've I've got away. What if I, I I give you to this hypnotist that I don't trust, <laughs> <laughs> mm. who I think almost implants things because he wants them to be true. <laughs> this guy, I'll I, get the truth out of you. <laughs> I think right, and uh, call me crazy. But I think Mulder's done this on purpose so that he can You're observe. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish my sentence. Yeah. I think he's done it on purpose so he can observe. Because he doesn't trust this guy and doesn't necessarily trust the process, but was never kind of fully conscious during the process, I think he's like, I don't know, I'll send Scully his way, but I'm going to sit in on it and I'm going to watch this guy's every move. I'm going to make sure they don't drug her with anything. I'm going to make sure they don't kind of suggest anything. Um, so, uh, but yeah, um, mm. that 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 would be my argument as to why he would put her to, onto onto him. But um, I I I I wasn't sure if I could buy Scully's adamant kind of I won't follow you without my memories kind of thing mm. you know because you know, like, she does point out that she's followed him like everywhere into into some right yeah. weird ass things on on shreds of evidence on, on on nothing sometimes just a hunch but, but then at the same time as well he's not really himself mm. and, and he feels distracted and of the Mulder that we know he's not looking at it he's not driven by his belief, or he yeah. is driven by his belief, but his beliefs have changed yeah. to a way that's more skewed. Yeah, his his yeah. faith has completely changed direction, mm. and at this point, Scully's is 
is heading that way. Mm. She's already experienced things like just in this two part where she's like, like we saw our last episode where she was like, maybe we shouldn't be so quick to dismiss mm. Cassandra. Um, so yeah, uh, it's as, it's as crazy as it, like if Scully suddenly decided, you know what, I, I'm I don't have any faith of religion. I now mm. fully support Satan. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like as crazy as that and, and Mulder would just be like yeah okay yeah he'd yeah, so be asking just... what's wrong yeah so, yeah all right so the syndicate look at photos of alien rebels uh, yeah and they say so, so they basically they say that they, they're mutilating their face to prevent infection by the black oil um okay hmm. I, I I can cut all right, I can buy it, given that these are aliens, they're not humans, therefore their skin probably doesn't work in the same way. Well, we know it doesn't because they can shape shift, so their skin clearly doesn't work in the same way. So maybe the oil slick alien thing can't infect them unless it goes through the eyes or the mouth. Yeah, oh, and it's, oh. it's, it's, I'm kind of down to this, but... I mean, it could be for, for humans, they can ad adapt through the skin, like you say. Maybe yeah. aliens, they can't. But at this point, yeah. I'm just thinking that this is a... It's pretty much just a biological weapon, isn't it? Like the, yeah. This ooze. It's, it's almost like a living, breathing weapon. Yeah. At, at this point... Where we are. Certain, yeah. yeah. At this yeah. point, this at is this, where I am. Yeah. This is what I'm yeah. thinking. At this point, it certainly seems that way, yeah. yeah. Um, so... The va they vaccinate Marita with the Russian vaccine. You know, you know, Marita is yeah, blonde girl. Yeah, that's it. So they, they vaccinate the blonde girl with the vaccine that well manicured man got off cryo check. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Scully goes for hypnosis, and mm -hmm. we have this really long hypnosis scene uh where we get to see the bridge incident and mm. she uh, while she's while she's reciting this kind of traumatic event her hand reaches out for Mulder's hands so they hold hands uh for all those shippers out there uh faceless aliens get taken out by a second ufo which then abducted cassandra and Mulder mm. does not look at all inspired <laughs> yeah he just looks like um oh he's rolling his eyes almost like <laughs> yeah like it's... A, oh i would never fall for this skull <laughs> yeah that's i think that's my the biggest gripe i've got over these two episodes it's such a hard 180 from like you know like it's definitely there to just be like oh. as if <laughs> like you're like yeah <laughs> you know, you see, um, I, I kept waiting like every time we go back to his office for a poster that says I don't want to believe you know just up in the background <laughs> you just like no more uh, it's, it's a great performance from Gillian Anderson um, although mm. <laughs> some of the noises she's making during this <laughs> <laughs> So if you weren't watching the screen and you were just listening, yeah. mm -hmm. it's like it's all right, love. It's, I'm just watching the X Files. It, it's that <laughs> scene where she gets hypnotized. No, really. <laughs> yeah. Triple X Files. Yeah, triple X Files. Oh man. Okay. So we go to Skinner's office, and Mulder sounds skeptical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, still thinks the memory is false. And Scully has no idea. So, but, yeah. yeah. And Mulder starts spouting all these rationales of what... He, I mean, he's playing Scully again, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Just like... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Skinner needs more for his for the report. Based on what they're giving him, he, 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 can't, file, he can't file a report on this stuff. Yeah. Um, so Mulder says it is all staged by the government... Skinner says aliens are more believable. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this episode was made today. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep, yep. Definitely. <laughs> so the vaccine has not worked on Marita. You know Marita, right? She's got the oil. Yeah. Blonde girl. Blonde check. Yeah, Blonde check, yeah. 
So, yeah, the vaccine has not worked on the blonde girl. Uh, the syndicate have already turned over the alien rebel without informing well manicured man. And you can just see yeah. the disdain in his face. But it's like, and it's, that's it's, the it's, thing. Like, every time we go to the council, they seem so structured and deliberate and they talk things over, but they've literally just buckled completely. Like, well, they, they are. A, they, yeah. they are, aren't they? They're, they're panicking. That's, I mean, that's yes. the point. That the, the, sheer panic. Yeah, they're like they're, they're kind of dropping like flies, and it's just um, because because not because things aren't going according to plan. Mm. You know, they've they've said that, that they said in this episode, I think it was that they, it's not in line with the timetable. It's too soon. They've just, I think that was in the previous episode actually. Yeah, that they, the aliens have jumped the gun. They're doing it too soon. Um, mm. so they're very clearly like you've got one half of them who are like we need to appease them and just to just to stay in the good graces because we don't know what they're up to and then you've got like mm. all those like well manicured man who are like no 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 we we this is this is where we seriously need to get our crap together and, and fight yeah. back if we can so um scully finds spender in the office he shows her a tape of when he was a kid in hypnosis mm. he tells her it's all bogus this man told him stories enough to, his his mum told him stories enough times that he started to believe them. Don't mm. let yourself be used, he says, before walking off. And I, I got to say that it, 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 uh, from Spender's perspective and the way he says it, it feels like he could be right. Mm. Um, and and like when the X-Files does this stuff well... Um, it, it that it, it like this it, this is it doing it well i think uh, when you when you throw a spanner in the works to to show that actually it could be either or and just hearing spend a side of things and mm. and hearing his rationale as to why it's all bogus you do start to get to the point where it's like ah yeah well you know scully has been with Mulder now for five years mm -hmm. nearly and she has heard all this stuff time and time again is that now filtering into her subconscious where it's leaving her more open to things and i think there's a yeah. there's a lesson there's a point being made there i think which we can all take into life which is that there's, there's also another point of, of spencer like spencer got told this story so many times he repeated it he then spent the next 15 years deluding himself into believing that it didn't happen and that it was mm. all bogus and it's just mm. <laughs> like yeah like, yeah what's true what's not Exactly. Yeah. Just, yeah. We've literally seen his mum floating up into the air. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say he's never done it? You know. Yeah. Well, we. I mean, we've seen it in um, Scully's memories. We've not seen yeah. it like beyond that. So there's there's, there's enough room for doubt there, um, which mm. I like. They, they 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 never play it during this episode as look. Here is absolutely, definitely, positively, one hundred percent what's happened. No, there's always mm. enough of a of a glass floor kind of thing to to make you question. Um, so, crate check. <laughs> so, this is my favourite scene. This is my favourite scene in the episode. Crate check beats Mulder with one hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all it took. It's like so. <laughs> crate check was the one guy that Mulder could always take, <laughs> yeah. except when he's only got one hand. Mm. I just. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just unbelievable. Type thing. Like, and, you must be losing it, Mulder. I can take you with one hand. <laughs> Even he knows it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yes, it's just. So, that's a good sequence. He tells, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like. So he tells him that he needs to stop them handing over the alien rebel. If he dies, the rebellion dies. Hmm. And then he kisses Mulder and hands him the gun, um, and then. I really love this shot, uh, and it's it's when Krychek leaves, and quite shockingly, Mulder lets him leave. Mm. Um, but the, the 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 camera pulls out wider and wider as we see Mulder just sitting there holding this gun, and you can see that once again his faith has been shaken. Mm -hmm. This this man, who is his mortal enemy, responsible for his partner's sister's death responsible mm -hmm. for his father's death comes to him now with information that could potentially put his faith back on 
track, so to speak. Yeah. And he's just he just looks lost. Yeah. Um, but I just I love the way it's shot. I love the way it's conveyed. Um, and just seeing Mulder sitting there in the darkness as he gets smaller and smaller. Just I just think it really conveys that really well. How he's how he's once again his faith has been shaken. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> so we go to the air base once again, where the budget Terminator arrives. Yeah. Brian Thompson climbs the fence, scales the fence, and goes over. Do you think that's a stuntman that comes down the other side? <laughs> yeah. Because he, he climbs up and his legs kind of do this weird little wiggle to go up. Mm. And then we see him jump down, but it could, yeah. It's it's these Definitely. things that go through. My, these things go through my head when I'm watching stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Scully calls at Mulder's. She's been reconsidering what she believed happened to her, thanks to Agent Spender. Uh, yeah. But so has Mulder. So it's like, <laughs> and it's like, it's that moment where you're like, oh, I see where they're going here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're getting Mulder it's... back to being Mulder. They're getting Scully back to being Scully. Yeah. Um, when they reverse the Fuki Fidey, it's going yeah, back yeah, to Yeah, 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 yeah. So they go to the Air Force base. Uh, so so the, the, the Air Force base is written on a napkin that Krychek left for Mulder. Um mm. So Mulder and Scully get to the base and try to blag their way in. You know that old trick. <laughs> well, you yeah. better call your boss, son. I don't want to know. <laughs> so, only the, only this time on. the guy's like, I will. I will. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I will, will call my boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, is, which is quite nice. Um, yes. So there's a truck leaving. Uh, just to, So the gate opens just as this guy goes to call his boss. A truck kind of drives past. And Scully recognizes the man driving. And it is, of course, Cancer Man's killer. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Mulder decides, I've got to get on that truck. So he does a runner, gets on the back of the truck. The guard starts shouting at him and uh, kind of calls for backup and stuff. Yeah. And then they arrest Scully. So, yeah, basically, Mulder just leaves Scully to it. He runs it runs it away. <laughs> He's like, he's like, if you if you better go and phone your boss because we should be in here. And as soon as he goes to phone his boss, he's like, <laughs> you know, you're on, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so inside the truck, Mulder finds the rebel hmm. with his eyes all kind of minute. Uh, you know the word. <laughs> Yeah. Mutilated. <laughs> mutilated, that's it. I was gonna say manipulated, mutilated. <laughs> um the truck stops and Canterman's killer gets out, climbs into the back, only is now budget terminated. Yep. Da, dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so he's in the back, and <sighs> that's when a light kind of appears through the truck, clearly a UFO, mm-hmm. comes out the back. Um, and then another faceless alien is kind of getting very slowly brought in. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of it begs the question, why doesn't the uh, budget terminate run up and <laughs> do him, do him Keep... there and then while he's like, oh, come here. <laughs> um, and then that's when Mulder kind of jumps out rather nonsensically, I, I might add, jumps out from behind screaming, no, and then yes. shoots. Now, because we know how well bullets work against these yeah. shapeshifting aliens, <laughs> even I remember that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so that's what I mean. It's like, oh man, there's three of these guys. Yeah, I'm stuck before in this I shoot. Truck. I'll just make sure I'm in an enclosed yeah. space. <laughs> yep, <laughs> good to go. Oh, good grief. So, I'm in an enclosed space with these three guys. All of mm-hmm. all of whom I know, just at least one of them is completely lethal to me yeah. if I shoot them. Um, so, it, yeah. yeah, it makes no sense at all that he would shoot. Now, as for the very kind of stereotypical Hollywood, no, kind of shoot, uh, kind of yeah. shout, um, I can only assume that's because right in front of his eyes is the confirmation, I guess, of the thing that he once believed in. Mm. And... So, so I, I just think it's I think it's the filmmakers or the TV makers just trying to make him look a bit more heroic after he just <laughs> beat up by a one-armed man. So 
<laughs> oh man, yeah. I, I just, I just think, yeah. To me, it makes no sense shooting the gun. But I think the the outpouring of emotion for me it, it is all about that he's now faced with the fact that the 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 faith he is rejected may need to be taken back on board. Um, yeah. But it doesn't matter because he's not going to remember any of this in nine minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, so we go back to the syndicate and it seems they jumped the gun rather hastily because Marita has been cured. Mm. She is cured. So well manicured man was uh was right. was right to say let's wait. Um whereas the gangster godfather dude clearly clearly jumped the gun on that one. Mulder is found on the truck by the military, alone, looking rather hazy. He's loaded mm. into the car with Scully, doesn't know what happened. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. Great. <laughs> so so technically, he shouldn't have his faith back once again because he can't remember. Mm. So everything that happened on that truck will have been forgotten because you got that nine minutes of memory loss. Mm -hmm. So from here on out, we shouldn't really have Mulder reverting back to old Mulder. We should have him reverting back to nine minutes ago Mulder. Um, let's, let's see if that's the case as we move on, I guess. I think we both know what's going to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> Spender goes to Skinner's office. Skinner yeah. is sympathetic towards him before telling him he has a patron in higher levels of office. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so, yeah, Spender gets a letter from mm. the, the copy boy. <laughs> uh, and he kind of he looks at it pretty nonplussed, like, mm, yeah, no thanks. Yep. Um, and that is confirmed when we see the kid again from the beginning hiking once more, once more up that snowy track, holding the letter that he'd previously been sent with, which has clearly been sent back to the person who sent it. And that person, it is now revealed to be, is Cancer Man. Cool. Um... <laughs> <laughs> This guy is hiding out in the middle of nowhere and puts a return address on his letter. <laughs> no, yeah, no, but it's but it's not his address, is it? It's the kid's address. Yeah, but surely people must know this. Like someone must know what's going on. Like surely there's other people in the government that know these secrets because they're always like watching each other and it it is addressed in so in the, the final episode of the season, the end. Um, but right. it, it is there is it, there's a there's a line dropped that addresses it, um, but okay. with regards to the, the whole address situation, I would imagine that he's employed this kid to send it from his address. That's why the kid's carrying it back up. Right. Clearly, it's been right. sent okay. back to that child, and the child's carrying it back up. So, yeah. <coughs> um, okay. Yeah. There you go. go on. Yeah. Um, like it's fine, it's fine. I I I, I really do feel like that this, this two parter, and I find this quite a bit with some of the mythology ones. It gets too deep into the mythology story, and it, it, these don't grab me as much mm. as some other episodes do. And I find it similarly here, where I don't feel that we've ended up in any kind of different place than where we were at the start of these two part episodes. Like mm. as in there, the, like Mulder is kind of back to. I'm assuming after this where he's going to be and Skull is going to be in a similar position. They've had this oh, yeah. great big adventure. But I just I just don't feel as if it's had the impact we're expecting it to have. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Because when we I, jump into the first part that they're all like completely role reversal changed. Yeah. And and I feel like that, that although there was bread comes up to that, it's such a quick changeover that it just kind of threw me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like Cassandra. Um Spencer, I thought, was kind of middle of the road. I don't have any feelings about him. Uh, they introduced this new blonde girl that <laughs> <laughs> does nothing to get infected. Yeah. Um, it's, but I feel like it's got some really cool cinematic sequences. All the alien stuff, the fire, the bridges, the, the, the 
that 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 night sequence is is pretty cool. But I kind of like Budget Terminator whenever he turns <laughs> up. It's nice to see him. It, it's for me, it's a four out of five. I think that's what I gave the the last <clears> episode <throat> as well. Yeah, I think it's roughly on par with that. Um, but it's one of those mythology ones where it just it leaves you with more questions than the answers. Yeah, I I do prefer the first part. Um, I would give this one a four as well. Hmm. I I like I like a lot of the stuff they set up. I, I, I like the the just the, this idea of this this the, just everything falling apart. Basically, the, hmm. the 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 syndicate has been working with these aliens for nigh on 30, 40 years, whatever. Well, since Roswell, really. Um, there's clearly a plan, hmm. but it's all falling apart, and that's because. Uh, one side of this alien race has decided to re- rebel against it all. And I just, mm-hmm. I like what that opens up, the possibility of where the story could go as a result of that. Um, for me, it, it, it's the it's the climax. It's not the episode that's the problem. It's, it's, a, it's anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. Having Mulder just scream, shoot his gun, really ineffectually. <laughs> yeah. See, what I would have, how I would have ended this is I would have had that alien, the, 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 the faceless one, coming in off the ship, and then he drops to the floor when the light goes out, and then those two just start beating the crap out of each other, really okay. going at it in the truck. And then Mulder, cluing into what's going on here and taking a risk, lets the other faceless one out. Hmm. Because you can clearly see what's going on here. The, non-face, the, the one with the face has come to kill the faceless one. Then another mm-hmm. faceless one shows up. Those two start going at it. So I think it's in that moment Mulder kind of picks a side, or at least yeah. the side that is going to help him within this instance. So he lets the guy, he lets the, the other faceless one out of the thing. Um, and then like yeah. mad, madness ensues and stuff. I just think it would have been a, a, a better climax um, rather mm-hmm. than just this. No. Yeah. It's like that well that was, yeah, that was so anticlimactic. You just you saw her in the back of a truck and then the lights went out. It's like that's it basically. Um but everything everything else <coughs> that was involved in that I kind of like. But again, like I say, so having Mulder see what he sees at the end kind of feels a bit pointless given that mm. he's not going to remember any of it. Or c- certainly yeah. shouldn't be able to remember any of it anyway. Um so the breadcrumbs that Krychek gave him kind of feel wasted by Mulder coming away with it, not having any memory mm-hmm. of what just happened. So it's it's for our benefit, the audience, mm-hmm. but not for Mulder. Not for Mulder, yeah. Which which makes it a bit. So yeah, but I'd I'd give it a four just because I do find it entertaining. It's quite a bit mm-hmm. of action in it, um, and yep. I do like that scene between Mulder and Krychek. So yeah. So tell me a little bit about travelers. <clears throat> So Travelers is an episode that takes place in, I think, it might be 1990. Um, Scully's not in it at all. I'm out. <laughs> Mate. Mulder is literally just starting on the X-Files. It's, it's like okay. he stumbled his way onto the X-Files and he's kind of digging into a case that's on there. Um, and he goes to see this guy about a particular case he's working on, and then the rest of the episode is literally told in flashbacks about this case that was done in the fifties by right. the guy by a guy who originally worked on the X Files. Hmm. Um, and that guy is played by Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Oh, who interesting! Is obviously, is is one of the uh, primary inspirations for for Chris Carter's creating the x-files in the first place but um yeah i can't say i remember too much about it um it it does that did did you ever see that tv show um dark skies yes lasted one season kind of Mm -hmm. kind of has a bit of a dark skies vibe about it but better better production Mm -hmm. i would say um and i think because Mulder's not in it much and Scully's not in it at all. It's not an episode I've ever really revisited all that much. So Mm. I'm not going to go on record and say this is like, you know, uh, whatever the hell, (laughs) El El Tupacabra, El Mundo Girard. Yes, we do, bitches. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, so El Mundo Gira, the, the one that I said was the worst oh, episode. Right, okay, is that the actually movie? turned out not to be, and Mulder and Scully were in it actually quite a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty sure Scully's not in it at all. And Mulder's only in it a little bit, and so I mm. think because of that, I've just ne- I've never dug it as it's probably quite good, but I've just never dug it as as much as yeah. other episodes. Well, do you know what? I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, getting by a mythology double episode. It's always good to get into just a little standalone, so I'm, I'm looking mm. forward to checking that out. So don't forget to join us next time on the X Files Revisited when we talk about travelers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.